Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. We have Ezeke Onyai, a public affairs analyst. He joins the conversation in no time. Ezeke, thank you for joining us this beautiful Thursday morning. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Thank you. We well, appreciate your time. Let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. And as always, uh, our attention would be on the top stories. PDP discards zoning and throws ticket open. Very interesting. And party primaries and electoral acts. Starving off litigations, President Mohamed Buhari acts Malami Amechi Timipur Silver, five orders to go. <laughs> I like how, you know, this captions are being put out. And uh, you have riders underneath uncertainty trails Amechi's resignation. I will consult with Mr. President and my people, Ngige. Really? Appeal court sets aside judgment on section 84, subsection 12. It will stop impunity and illegality, says CSOs. APC adjust timetable on governorship primaries now May 20, uh, National Assembly May 24. But I'm, I'm just hoping that this also is in tandem with INEC. Not forgetting yesterday we talked about this. And, uh, you know, INEC is saying that the timetable has already been printed, the time that was submitted. There will be no review of the timetable. We're hoping that INEC does not make, I mean, they stand by their words and not going to make an exception for a certain political party. In security, Masari shots Batsari Jabi Road. APC presidential forms, I did not collect 200 million from Jonathan. Uh, find out who's saying all of that. And you find Aisha Buhari wants envoy support for women in politics. ASU strike. ASU federal government meets in ASU Rock today, or ASU Villa, and bandits kill Connell, seven soldiers in Taraba. Uh, the headlines on the leadership this morning. Away from the leadership, uh, we'll move on next to the Punch newspaper. The lead story for this morning, uh, Buhari bows to pressure APC panel uh, may demand uh, resignation letters. Mwajuba Onu Akpabio tender resignation, Malami Ngege retain seats. Action belated could have saved nation from drama as SAN spirit Buhari above the masthead one, 19 days after Simban. NIN registration hits 80.7 million. INEC plans three week suspension of online voter registration. ASU reps intervene, students shut down Lagos Abel Kuta Road. 2023 elections unlikely, Nigeria progressing to anarchy, that's according to Falai. It's wicked owing us pensions, protesting civil war veterans lament. Lagos to demolish 10 more distressed buildings before Sunday. Hoodlums invade Lagos Hotel, kill guard, rob, jump officials. Banks' assets rise by 19%, hit 62.01 trillion naira. That's according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. A run, according to rules, says Tunde Bakari. Football trials, police arrange suspect. Olympian denies defrauding businesswoman. AKT driver bags life jail for raping student passenger twice. Those are the stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Away from the uh, Punch newspaper, the Daily Independent is before us this morning. Primaries, appeal court, insists political appointees won't vote. Says they won't be voted for, can't be candidate for elections. Uh, that's the writer says they won't be voted for and can be candidate for elections. Set aside judgment voiding section 84, subsection 12, sees provision as illegal. There's a lot going on. And strike Buhari says all holds meeting with ASU, NASU orders today at the Vila. And you have the NJC issues policy direction on handling political and election related cases. Another header this morning on the Daily Independent. Underneath that caption, recommends appointment of 49 judges. 
Just before we move away, APSU set to go on strike gives federal government two weeks ultimatum. Reps amend electoral acts to allow statutory delegate vote at primaries. A vet rowdy session rejects proposed amendment to section 29. I will support whoever emerges in fair primary. Uh, that's what uh, the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed, is quoted to say. And court nullifies Malamis com Committee on Sale Disposal of Recovered Asset. 2023 elections on new Majoba Akpabio quits cabinet after uh, Buhari's directive. Uh, these are some of the headlines. And one dies as gunmen attack jam officials in Lagos Hotel. It's very sad. On the Daily Independence this morning, the headlines. And finally, uh, we will review the Guardian newspaper. The Electoral Act is just taking front page across some various papers this morning. Three ministers uh, resign, others are uh, in a fix. Several captions or several writers there. Uh, Pew Court knocks uh, lower court on section 84, subsection 12. Akbabio Arno, media aide Obey Buhari's directive, resign. Education junior minister resigned April 28. Ngege, I will consult my constituency before I resign. Late resignation may hurt ministers' ambition, stirs up legal debate over 30 day ultimatum before primaries. Reps align with Senate amend electoral act for statutory delegates. Senate adjourns sitting to allow lawmakers participate in party primaries. Away from that, NJC issues policy directions on election-related cases. Nausa vows to disrupt party primaries. 2023 elections is Ivasu strike persists. PDP flays a NAP foundation of a survey report on Ikiti Guba polls. Don't drag us into partisan politics. Cross River Monarchs won. Self-determination group seeks cancellation of 2023 general election. Other stories on the front page of The Guardian. Tenor extension call unconstitutional. Tenor extension call unconstitutional. Threats to democracy. Olanik Mekong wants. PDP nomination crisis deepens in South South. It will won't complain if Wiki or Mechi or Mayfield emerges, uh, President says group. Uh, let's see if you can take one or two more. Gunmel kills six soldiers, abduct commander and Taraba. Tortiv alleges herders plots to seize ancestral land. Uh, 47 days after hero attack Buhari on freeing abducted Abuja Kaduna train passengers and a whole lot more making front page of the Guardian newspaper this Thursday morning. We have Ezekiel Yaitok who joins the conversation this morning. It's a delight to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me as always. Uh, it's a delight to be here. All right then. Let's start off with the proclamation of the president asking that uh, members, I mean those of the members of the Federal Executive Council resign uh, if they have any political ambition. Now we have seen Akpabio, among others, um, heeding that direction. Yeah, there's something about leadership. You, you, to be a leader, you must be on top of the game. You must be constantly briefed and you must direct and drive the processes. It's not enough for you to say, I've delegated and that is enough. No, no. We need a president who is on top of the game. As soon as this law came out, what I had expected was Mr. President to ask for a legal opinion. Two ways. One from within, another from outside. He sits down, looks at the whole you know, implication, the imports, and the prognosis of the whole law, and then takes a proactive decision. If Mr. President had done this, there was a law that says, don't do this. It's always better to err on the side of caution. Now he had an option, which was, Malami, attack this, get a Supreme Court um, you know, interpretation, and let me know where I am early enough. He left it to linger right now, technically, even if they resign. The 30 days before the primaries would have elapsed. I don't know how this is going to work out. So, giving the law now or the instruction now, I do not know 
what serves him at the end of the day. I think that I'm still concerned that we need to understand what leadership is in Nigeria. And as we try to you know, elect the next president or choose the next president, we Nigerians should have a conversation on what should be expected, the leadership criteria that we must look at before we go, so that even when they start campaigning, there are certain parameters that we have as Nigerians. And again, I wish the media will be able to like, um, give us that direction, you know, that compass that will guide Nigerians, which is one of the, the responsibilities of the media, which is why they are called the fourth estate of the realm. And also not just the media, but we that call ourselves our elders or the elites or the enlightened, you know, we need to also know that in recruiting a CEO for this country, there must be a profiling criteria and we should make that available to the public who are going to be the people to choose. So I think that Mr. President's um, instruction or, uh, yeah, instruction has come maybe a little too late, but better late than never, you may say. All right, uh, let's take um, all those stories, uh, you know, making um, headlines, uh, staying with the Guardian newspaper. Well, a lot of people, or some groups are calling for the, you know, cancellation of the 2023 general elections. Uh, now, this self-determination group seeks cancellation of the election. Uh, Ezekiel Nyaetok, this is not the first time there has been a call for the cancellation or the shift for uh, of the 2023 general elections, uh, but should this be what uh, we should be looking at right now? You see, there's the word anarchy, another word confusion. Mm -hmm. These are two words that we really need to look at very well because you don't just talk. We run a constitutional democracy. What that means is that there's something called rule of law and processes. Can they tell me what they have put in place, how we intend to do this, or put away? Are you trying to talk in terms of tenor elongation? If that is to be done, are you aware that it is a constitutional matter where it is one of those areas that the National Assembly cannot just pass a law and that is it? It will have to go into, you know, changing the or adjusting the constitution, which will have to not only go through the two arms of um, the National Assembly, but also at least two thirds of the state assemblies. How many days? Why are we talking about this now? I think that what we need to do, if you mean well for this country, is to say in the next dispensation, this is what we want to achieve. <clears throat> On account of that, these are the sort of people who commit to this that we should bring into the house so that when they get in, there'll be a legislation that alters and gives us the sort of governance that we want. A lot of these, you know, things or, 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 or agitations, which are not really, are, are contrived. They are people who have been on the seat of power, and suddenly they are seeing themselves getting out of power that they thought was their own for life. They didn't know that it's a tenured stuff. And it's a job that you leave is not your company. Now they are seeing that they are now looking for ways to, you know, go behind and cause all manner of confusions. <clears throat> we must have our eyes on the ball. And I want to tell Nigerians, please ignore these people. Make sure you look for credible people to, to, to vote for. Make sure you give them an agenda to use as their manifesto. If what you want is a referendum, start to sell that agenda that if you commit yourself to this at least say it the bible says that a man is ensnared by the words of his eyes on his mouth so let us you know get the people to say this is the agenda we want commit yourself to that agenda and we will vote for you and then i think that's a better route to go than for you to say okay let's do that government of national unity eternal elongation all those things are distractions, not for now. And secondly, politicians are also in need. Politicians who know that they are not good enough know that if you set up the real recruitment criteria, they will not fit into it. So they bring a counter-narrative to distract you and get you to start to talk 
And before you know, it's election time. They say, okay, it's not too late. Let's go. And then they come back to power. I think that we must have our eyes on the ball. Let us seek the Nigeria we want, paint the picture, and make sure that we enlighten the people enough on the sort of people they should elect into the house or the, 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 the governance system so that we can have a focused governance come 2023. But um, let's continue on this particular note, the issue of self-determination group seeking cancellation of the 2023 elections. I mean, shouldn't we pay attention to all of these thoughts that are being put out? First, we actually had these elder statesman, um, Afeba Balola, who was suggesting that it would be okay to have an interim government um, so we don't recycle the same leaders. And now we're having people saying, uh, you know, let's cancel the elections for 2023. Should we not pay attention to this thought pattern? Now, as, as you pay attention, the question is how? It's a, very, it's a very simple, it's not something that is complicated at all. How do you want to do it? You want to suspend the constitution? How do you want to do it? Please tell the people to elect women and men of character, competence, capacity. That should be your campaign. Don't tell me we should. How do you want to do it? How? And, and the, the, the revered uh, legal luminary, uh, I mean, he knows too well. How come he did not tell us how we should get about it? Are you telling me that we should go to National Assembly now? And tell them, tell them what? How do you want to do it? It doesn't make sense. So, so the, the question here is, should we, maybe would rather say, should we not be worried, but not worried in that particular sense? I mean, this is in the speculative. There's been a lot of speculation about whether or not, I you know, we're going to have the 2023 war. elections. And then you have different groups and persons who are postulating and suggesting that we cancel the elections. Should we not be concerned? Should we not be meeting with these groups? And Indeed, we should understand what distraction means. We shouldn't even continue with this discussion. I shouldn't even spend one more minute of my time on this discussion. I'm a very, by the grace of God, cerebral person. I'm enlightened. And I'm asking you a simple, why should I be worried? Election is around the corner. Election is around the corner. They are about to choose the people that are going to be on the ballot. And you want to tell me now? is a time that I should be worried. Before you can say, Jack, parties have elected the people that will be on the ballot, and you are confined to those people. And this is a time for you to have a conversation of how I should be worried about what could be, may be, when there is what is. And what is that that is? It is that we have an election, and parties are choosing their representatives now. What should bother us is who am I going to see on the ballot? Who am I? Because the moment you have candidates, that's, it forecloses everything. You can either choose between six and half a dozen, or you have a fresh option alternative, or you put pressure on the two main parties to ensure, look at what PDP is doing now. Look at what APC is doing. They've taken us for granted that whoever they give to us is what we'll take, because the media is like, oh, APC or PDP, APC or PDP. They've already bought us, so they have no business trying to impress us. But if they knew that there is a third force, Nigerians have a choice, which is what the press should have been on. Who are the options? A man like Mohanu cannot be treated as somebody that's a non-entity. You compare him to some of the names that you call in APC or PDP, and I just feel insulted, you know, as a personal thing. A man like Kachiku, these are people, Moye, these are young people who have made a mark, who are visionary. But because we have not profiled the, 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 the criteria for the recruitment, you know, when you profile the criteria for the, the recruitment, you discover that you want, don't want to be a boxer at 70 years. You don't want to be a boxer. But if there are no things, you know, uh, you, you just look at yourself, you look at the criteria, you tell yourself, I know fit. Look at the 27 people that bought 27, uh, uh, what do you call it, 100 million, 27 people. Put those people, 
call a, a body like KPMG to bring out a profiling criteria for the CEO for Nigeria. Over 90% of them wouldn't even bother to buy a form. But because we do not have this recruitment criteria, everybody just coming in. When will we have a criteria that the parties will use to bring out the candidate that must be? You know, there's a way the party can even say, bros, leave this in, don't worry, don't worry. It's not that we want money, we want to win. All right, so, Mr. Nyaito. We need to move on and um, move away from that particular one. Um, let's uh, slide on to the leadership uh, newspaper. You know, this issue of Jonathan contesting, Jonathan not contesting, seems to be uh, lingering for quite too long. But uh, the way the leadership captioned it for this morning, uh, APC presidential forms, I didn't collect 200 million naira from Jonathan. That's according to Governor Badaro. Let's get your quick opinion concerning that. It's all the distractions. Mm. I have stated it. Yesterday I was on this station, you know, um, um, plus politics. Okay. And I made a very fundamental statement. After Mandela, arguably, President, former President Jonathan is one Nigerian that has enjoyed global acceptance, respect, honor. And that is good for the image of Nigeria. That's number one. Number two, the South will feel short change that Jonathan comes back to collect the presidency that cannot stay for eight years in the South, then for four years and then back to the North. They will hate the man no end. Thirdly, the current situation that we are in needs a leader that is charismatic, that is visionary. And we cannot forget too soon how Jonathan was painted with all the terrible you know, paints as being clueless, as being immoral, as being all sorts of things. We can't forget too soon. The moment the campaign starts, these things will come back. I do not know what the advisors of Jonathan are telling him. But my honest opinion is that for the love of country, for the love of country, let us have one Nigerian that is respected. OBJ is another man. If the more that is added, if the, as soon as President Buhari gives us free fair credible election, he will join that class of people. And Nigeria can say these are one, two, three global citizens that can speak for us if we need debt relief or forgiveness or you no know, voices. Let's not bring President Jonathan back and rubbish him. Please, I hope this matter just dies away. Whether somebody bought or collected money is not important. Eyes on the ball means, President Jonathan, please remain that our shining star to the global community, a good name for Nigeria, and please just leave this presidency alone. Okay, um, quickly, it talks about uh, the online voter registration that has been suspended according to INEC. They have actually put out the reason for all of that suspension. It's supposed to allow time uh, for uh, physical registration at designated centers taking place at the same time. Yeah, they've been making a lot of efforts down here where I am. You know, I'm contesting the governorship of five on set. And right down to my ward, the INEC people are bringing their people down to the ward to do the physical registration. I, I want to uh, 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 appeal to the young people. It's good that you go down to get physically registered. It's not like registration is suspended. They just say, look, just come to where we are. And if you go early enough, the pressure is not mounting right now. And my neck maybe get as much decentralized as possible. They actually came to my ward and then uh, no spent number of days trying to get the people to register. I think that um, this is good. It, it not only helps you to, to, to get to meet them, it, it helps you to kind of acquaint yourself, you know, start to have, instead of just sitting in your room and getting it done, it is good. But early enough, let us start to get to the world, get to know where your station would be. It, it, it's an animation that I think makes sense. I, I, I tend to agree with INEC, but maybe they should also be doing not too fixed on it. After the primaries, they could have another little window, so long as 
it is something that they know they can meet the timelines that they've set. But it's better they follow their timelines than try to impress people and then get into trouble on the long run. All right. Uh, 19 days after SIM and BAN, NIN registration hits 80.7%. Million. That's according to the Punch newspaper. Nigerians are seemingly registering so much now. It's been 19 days and over 80.7 million have registered. What does this tell you, Ezekiel? Yeah, two things is that um, if you want to do something, do it. Nigerians have a way of thinking, oh, it won't happen and they will shift it, they will postpone it, they will shift it, they will postpone it. I think that when they started blocking lines, and they were not, you can receive calls, you cannot make calls. People now started taking it really serious. So I, I, I think it's good enough, so long as the registration is put to good use and not politicized. I think, I think it, it's good. We are making progress. All right. Thank you so much, Ezekiel Nyaeto. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. We look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on the breakfast. Uh, we appreciate you always. And so do I. All right, uh, that's the size of Off the Press uh, for this uh, Thursday. We'll be taking a quick break and see uh, what happened this day in history. And when we come back, we'll be talking about um, the president's directive to uh, his FEC members and the implications of all of that in a moment. Stay with us.